it's Nikki and welcome to Create Make Decorate where I like to teach you how to create beautiful things for your home on a budget and I like to create simple crafts as well. I don't like to get too complicated uh, and I believe in uh, being perfectly imperfect. So if you like that then uh, let's have some fun today. So what I'm going to do is teach you how to create a really cute sign for Easter slash spring decor and what you're going to need is uh, some scrapbook paper of your choice. This particular print I picked up over at Hobby Lobby. I am using a 12 by 12 canvas as well as one of these uh, bunny cutouts, rabbit cutouts from the Dollar Tree. We're also going to need some Mod Podge, some paint colors of your choice, and some fabric strips. I picked up a bundle of these over at Joann's. You can get them for roughly $12.99 to $14.99 depending upon which you pick, what you pick. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use those and I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and just get my scrapbook paper onto uh, my canvas piece here. So you're going to need uh, quite a bit of Mod Podge for this step. The canvas tends to uh, really absorb the Mod Podge. So I'm just going to start slathering it on there. It's a great idea if you have a blow dryer or if you have a heat gun also. I use that to kind of help smooth out the wrinkles and things and, and bubbles uh, on your uh, scrapbook paper. So how are you all doing? I hope that you guys are uh, getting prepared. I hope you're ready for some Easter. I love spring because, you know, it's a renewal. I love to get new, fresh. It's like new, fresh uh, renewal time of life and it's just I just love the colors and everything that go along with it so getting a good amount of Mod Podge on there you may have to reapply as you go but you just want to get a good base try to not make it clumpy you want to try and get as, as smooth of a coat as you can and just really get it saturated on there You'll see as you move that you're going to see where that canvas is absorbing that Mod Podge. So you're going to have to kind of go back over it and really get it down in there. So once you have it on, you're just simply out to stand up. Sorry, I got to stand up to see what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I think the hardest part to some of these crafts is just getting things on there straight. Can you all relate with me on that? Sometimes I have the best intention and then once I get it on there, it looks all crooked and off off you know half of it's hanging off the side and half of it you can see the canvas through so uh, I think that's just the hardest part so I have a little just like a business card a credit card would be great whatever you have that you could just go ahead and smooth it out and you're just getting those air bubbles smoothed out now we have to remember that the rabbit the bunny is going to be covering a good part of this so if you don't get it perfect don't worry about it a lot of it's going to be covered we're mainly just using it as the backdrop for the craft. So grabbing my heat gun, this also helps it, it adhere to it. So grab your heat gun or blow dryer if you have one. If you don't, no worries. And just go ahead and smooth it out. Get your fingers in there and just start working that piece around. Just like that. Very easy. I think the hardest part about Mod Podge is just making sure that you don't have too many wrinkles on there. As you can see, it's starting to lift there, so no problem. Just go ahead and reapply and work the edges as you need to. Sometimes there's just nothing like your hand just to go ahead and get everything smoothed out. Now I know a lot of people, it bothers them if they see some wrinkles or they see some air bubbles in it. Like I said, I am all about being perfectly imperfect. It's about, it's all about having fun and not stressing out while you're crafting because crafting is good for the soul, right? Crafting is supposed to make you relaxed and uh, just have a good time while you're doing it. So don't stress, don't stress on the little things. It's always fixable and you could always cover something up if you happen to mess something up, so. All right, so we're gonna just make sure that at least our edges are all nice and sealed down on here. Now I have to move along quickly because I got about 20 minutes <laughs> to do this craft. So I'm gonna be kind of 
jamming as I go here. So if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below and get that nice and adhered on there. Okay, now I'm gonna set this aside to dry. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our little rabbit. Again, I do have some wrinkles in there, but that's gonna cover up a, a big amount of that. See how pretty that looks already. Now, if you want the, if you don't like the uh, sides being exposed in their natural color, you can go ahead and paint them. I'm gonna leave mine as is because I think it just kind of blends. I, it's fine to me. But if you wanted to add a little extra something, go ahead and just uh, paint your sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our rabbit. Now I wanna share with you a cool technique. I love all things that are distressed, shabby chic, French country. So that's kind of the vibe that I'm going with this uh, art piece that we, we are creating. So uh, what I'm gonna do is do like a two step uh, process here on my paint, as well as showing you guys a cool way to just uh, distress things using some good old Vaseline. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna grab one of my favorite colors, which is Moss from Waverly Chalk Paint. It is such a beautiful green. It's one of my favorite greens, okay? So I'm just gonna grab my paint, and we're just gonna use a little bit of this. I'm not gonna paint the whole underneath green, okay? Because another, uh, a simple way that I'm gonna show you how you can go ahead and distress is kind of like a cheat way. If you look at things that are distressed, typically it's on the edges, right? So what you wanna do is just take your underneath color and you're, I'm just gonna paint it along the edges, just like this, where I want that paint to show through. And just random pieces, or random spots, I should say. You know, when things are naturally distressed in the elements, they're not, it's not perfect, it's imperfect. So keep that in mind when you're applying your paint. Just remembering where you want that, that uh, green or whichever color you choose as your under, undertone color or underneath color. I'm gonna be using also a sanding block along with this. So as I sand and as I distress once this is dry, we're gonna be seeing some of the green coming through. We're gonna see, be seeing some of the natural wood colors coming through. So just, uh, like I said, keep that in mind as you're applying your, your colors here. If you don't you know, want yours distressed, then of course just paint it a solid color. Again, this is the look that I like. I like all things chippy pilly. So I'm gonna leave it about like that. Now you wanna make sure that the underneath color is good and dry before you apply your top color, okay? So I'm gonna, that's where my heat gun is gonna come in handy again, just to kind of help speed up the process here. Because if you don't, of course, the colors will uh, blend together and then it just won't get the effect that I'm looking for here. So we're gonna be working in back and forth uh, modes here, going from one thing to another. So we'll get this dry. We're gonna apply uh, a lighter color over it. I'm gonna be using the color Plaster in Waverly Chalk Paint. Waverly Chalk Paints are actually my favorite uh, chalk paints to use. You can find them over at Walmart. Unfortunately, my Walmart is no longer selling them, so I'm pretty bummed about it. I think I need to start looking online for them. But they're just an inexpensive chalk paint. They're, uh, they go on smooth. I painted furniture with the chalk paint. I painted many crafts with the chalk paint. Uh, it's just a product that I like. Just get this good and dry. Nobody likes sitting waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> okay, I think that's good for the most part. All right, so now we just have it, like I said, placed in random, random places here. 
Now we're going to take our lighter color. Again, I'm using plaster in Waverly chalk paint. It's just a really pretty kind of ivory off-white color. So <clears throat> I'm going to grab my paintbrush, which I should have had ready. And I'm using a chip brush. I love using chip brushes, especially when you're trying to distress and make things look a little bit more worn and weathered. Uh, because the, the ch this is what the brush looks like and when it applies it, it doesn't apply it like a very smooth, smooth solid coat. It kind of uh, creates that, well you'll see in a minute what it creates. <laughs> you'll see in a minute what it creates here. Alright, so getting a good amount on there, I'm just going to go ahead and brush it over. Not paying a whole lot of attention to the edges, okay? You guys, and I totally forgot to add my Vaseline. Hold on. Stop. I'm going to stop while I can. Vaseline. If you take your Vaseline and you kind of apply it over the under paint that you see here that I kind of did there, especially in the centers, I should say, in the center of your piece, along the edges, the... Um, the sanding block is going to do the job that it needs to do. But this just, what this Vaseline does is it makes that top coat not adhere to the paint, the under paint or the under, whatever's underneath there. And so when you go to distress it with your sanding block, it just takes a lot of the work out for you. And it just, it looks cool. So get a good amount on that. Glad I stopped myself. That would have been a bummer. I promised you a Vaseline technique and I almost didn't do it. <laughs> Y'all be thinking I'm a liar over here. Okay. So that's pretty much, I think I got it all that I need. And you don't need a lot. You just need enough to just kind of smear on there. You don't want like globs of it on here. You just want enough to create like a barrier, almost like if you were applying chapstick. All right, so moving on. Let's get back to business here. And just get that paint on there. I'm going very light along the edges and Pay more attention to getting it a little bit more solid in the center. And I tell you, I'm down to the nitty gritties on my Waverly chalk paint, which makes me sad because I love it. Like making things distress I really don't think there is any right or wrong way in doing it I think it really just depends on what what the, the look is that you like once you kind of get it to that point and you're like oh that's kind of cool I like that look then stop you know there's you do you do it as you want of hard to hold this up you guys I'll be honest usually I have it flat but I want you all to be able to see what I'm doing here so I'm going to show you up in the camera you see how that's starting to look I'm not doing solid I want that kind of rustic distressed look so I'm not going for a solid coverage here Got to put my little mat underneath, so I'm trying to hold it up so I don't get a bunch of paint on my desk here. So, who's all about crafting and creating on a budget? I was taught that by my mom when I was little. My mom was like the OG of like thrift store shopping and crafting and creating and doing things to where she didn't have to spend a ton of money because at the time she didn't have a ton of money to spend. So I learned at a very young age how to just kind of create things and, and try and do it as inexpensively 
as you can, especially with seasonal decor, because seasonal decor, I mean, you don't really want to have to go spend tons of money because it's only out for, you know, certain times of the year. So um, I love to create things like this and not and figure out uh, go arounds to not have to spend a ton of, money, ton of money doing it, but where it looks like you've spent some, you know, good money or it's something that you bought from a boutique, right? I like to look online at uh, places like Pier One or something like that and kind of create little dupes off of what they have. Okay, so let me kind of turn it towards me and see if I like. Okay, so I'm gonna leave mine at that, okay? You could still see some of those colors coming underneath, but that's the look I'm creating for me. That's what I like. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna let this kind of dry on its own. And I'm going to move on to show you just a cool way that you can make a, uh, we're going to make like a little tail for our bunny, but we're not going to do it with cotton. We're going to end up doing it with some fabric strips. So let me show you how to go about doing that. And it's actually very easy. So what I'm using, I said, like I said again, over at Joann's, you can buy their fabric sheets. Or their, yeah, their fab, they come like in a roll. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your roll. If you don't have that and you have scrap fabric around the house, just go ahead and cut it. These are probably about two inches uh, long and probably, I don't know, I don't even know how many inches long this is, probably about 24 inches, okay? But you can make it to any size that you want. So what you're going to do, you can use either fabric glue or you can use regular glue, okay? And what you're going to do is just go ahead and take your strip of fabric or a strip your glue, I should say, and you're just going to run a thin, thin line of it, and you're just going to fold it over, and you're going to work down your strip as you go. This is really simple to do. Smooth it out and work as you go. course the longer your strip the fuller of a flower that you're gonna have the smaller the fabric this the smaller the flower Boy, this glue is like not wanting to come out you can use regular hot glue too I'm just using fabric glue because it's what I have here so you got everything folded over, okay? Make sure that everything, all the edges are glued down good. Now what you're gonna do is you have your strip and you have it folded over like this. You're just gonna take your scissors and maybe about, I don't know, every half inch, you're gonna cut loops. You're gonna go like this. You want to make sure that you're not gonna cut all the way through. You wanna leave maybe a half inch or so left at your base, okay? my dog Merle <laughs> barking outside I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that because I don't think I need that much of it so this is what you're gonna have you're gonna have these loops here now what you're gonna do is simply glue and roll okay so you're gonna grab a little bit of glue If your glue comes out, that one is giving me a hard time. <laughs> so I'm going to go over to my regular hot glue gun, which should be rolling. Yeah. And you're just going to start taking it. And at that base, you're just going to roll it. Once you get the hang of these flowers, you can bust a, a bunch out in no time.
you want to make sure that you try and keep that bottom flat as flat as you can and then this is what you're left with okay see how that looks and then this is your flower and you're just gonna go ahead and kind of puff it out just like this now what I love about these is that I think the more layers and the different colors that you add the better that they look so I'm gonna go ahead and take some scrap pieces that I have here and do the same I got my strip of glue we're gonna flap it over like this and cut. Okay, and do the same. Add your glue and roll. not going to roll. You're going to take your other flower and you're going to place that on top of your strip here and then you're going to roll. So you're creating different layers of like I guess what would be your petals. Like this. Okay so that's what you kind of look like very pretty so of course the more you add and the larger your flower the prettier that this is going to become right so you can kind of see what I'm doing here so I'm gonna set those aside I'm gonna take my heat gun and I'm gonna finish up drying up our bunny here this is hard to do in 20 minutes I'm gonna tell you <laughs> I think I'm a minute over so I need to step it up a notch. So get that paint good and dry. Now you can leave it as is if you wanted to, but I want to show you how that Vaseline technique works because it's just really cool. If you guys aren't following along here at Create Make Decorate with Mickey, I would love for you to hit that follow button. You can also find me over at createmakedecorate.com, which is my blog, where you'll find a bunch of step-by-step uh, -step tutorials, uh, as well as over on YouTube at Create Make Decorate with Mickey, uh, Instagram, Create Make Decorate by Mickey, <laughs> and Pinterest. So this is what we have now, okay? You can kind of see where that Vaseline wasn't sticking in those areas that I put it along the center. So this is where the fun begins. Now you're just gonna take a good uh, sanding sponge or piece of sandpaper and you see how easy that came right off. Really simple. And then of course go along your edges That and it just really takes a lot of the work out for you. Guys, I, get, I move as I'm crafting. I'm standing up. 
I'm sitting down. This is just going to be so adorable. Now you can create a hanger on it if you want a hanger. I'm going to just probably lean this up. It is a canvas, so if you wanted to hang it on a wall, you already have. If you put a nail, of course, you just have. You know, you can hang it right from there. So very simple, but get creative with it. Now we're going to take our little our bunny tail, our floral flower, and that's going to create its tail. Go ahead and glue that right down on in there. And with these flowers, you kind of just want to get your fist or your palm there and you kind of just want to get them down as flat as you possibly can. So now we've got our flower, our tail, I should say. So to create a little flower, you can leave it like that, but this has a little hole. Look how adorable that is looking. Isn't that just precious? I just love it. But it could use a little bow to cover up that little hole there. So I went ahead and just cut some different strips of fabric here, or excuse me, ribbon, not fabric. I get ahead of myself, you guys. I get excited, I get excited. And some jute twine, and I'm just gonna go ahead and loop that around the back. Kind of like one of those crisscross bows, but I'm not using, I'm not doing crisscross. I'm just gonna go ahead and use one layer of all. And I am not the best of bow makers, so don't be judging my bows. <laughs> Anyone that follows along over here knows I am not a good bow maker. Okay. So just something that's a little messy. Again, it's going along the line of that shabby chic, that perfectly imperfect kind of feel, is which is what I like. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue that right down on there. I hope you enjoyed this craft. I hope you all are going to make it. There goes Merle. If you uh, enjoyed it, uh, please let me know in the comments. Please hit that follow button over at Create, Make, Decorate with Nikki here on Facebook. And I would love for you to follow me along over on the blog at createmakedecorate.com where you can see a lot more video, or not videos over there, but step-by-step -step tutorials. Okay, you guys, and that's it. How precious did that turn out? Just simply beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed day, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.